Hi everyone, today I'm going to do uh, the cover of this uh, journal. I finished it, so it's time for the cover. And it's going to be so simple. It's going to be steampunk and all you need is glue and you need some packaging like cereal uh, uh, packaging or anything that is a little bit uh, thicker than just plain paper. Now I'm going to use some uh, punches I have, but you don't have to have them. I'm going to go through all the options that you can uh, use and it's really going to be very simple. Right now I'm moving uh, my journal and I'm going to start by talking about what we are uh, going to do. So I've got some, this is a cereal uh, packaging, this is from some linen packaging and it really doesn't matter so if you've got the punches uh, by all means it's the best it's easier I've got uh, this circle three inch I've got two inch and yes I love circles I have one and a half inch and this is two and a half centimeters and I don't know what this is, it doesn't say on top of it. And I've got this uh, hexagon, it's two inch, and another hexagon, and it doesn't say the size of it. So, all you have to do is start punching in whatever uh, packaging you have and keep everything. Not only uh, punch the shape, keep all the leftovers and I'm going to do it and show you what I'm uh, talking about so if I've punched three circles here and now I'm just going to go and cut this piece and I'm going to use it also and I'm cutting it so I can move on to another piece and it would be easier to work with Oops. Okay, once again, I'm going to just cut this and I'm going to save it. So I've got this. Now, if you don't have punches, as I said, there are all kinds of other uh, stuff you can use. First of all, there is uh, all this like templates and there are so many kinds of them, especially for kids. And even if you don't have this, then there are all kinds of circle objects all around the house that you can uh, take and just trace them and start cutting. Now, the only thing about cutting circle shapes is that I recommend that you will use nail scissors because they have a curve and it's easier to uh, cut it. So. We've got all kinds of shapes. Now, another thing, if you have a less thick packaging, something that you can fold, then you can do more shapes out of it. I'm folding it, I'm going in, and I'm punching almost like half a circle, this one doesn't want to get in but even if I uh, don't use the punch I will just go in with the scissors and I will have another shape and I'm keeping this also I don't know how much of it I will use or a uh, which I will use but I'm keeping everything and when you are left with this kind of stuff then just keep it I'm going to use also this kind of shapes I don't care I'm just going to play with all the shapes I'm getting and here I'm just doing this and I have a rectangle and if you have a square punch also you can use it really doesn't matter just a uh, play with it Another way to go about it, and uh, like if I have this large circle, I can just get in like this. And let's take 
this and I can draw the circle inside and now I can just cut it like so. So I've got this and I've got this. I can also do something the same, but I will cut my circle. I can uh, cut it in half. I can cut it into in thirds. Whatever I want, whatever shape I feel like playing with. Like so. So now I can cut like this. And I have this shape and this shape. I can also decide that I want something different and go like this. So now I have these two shapes. So, all this I'm going to put aside. Now I've got a lot of uh, shapes to play with. And what I'm going to do is start gluing them to my cover. And this is completely and utterly playing with the shapes. I'm all, always starting with the, the bigger ones. Here are the leftovers. That I'm going to play with I think I will put them first and then start playing with all the other shapes so just playing with what I have I think I'll just start gluing now I'm using um, silicone glue um, the best I know is uh, there is the Yuhu uh, brand which has the silicone glue in uh, things like this and also I someone told me that Eileen's uh, clear glue is also a uh, silicone uh, glue and maybe just maybe I don't know because I don't have this stuff here maybe also Fabri-Tac is also a silicone glue now you don't have to have silicone glue I'm just using it because it's quick it's strong and I have it from the cheap store of course so just going to start playing with the pieces you can also a uh, white glue will work but it will take longer to dry but but then you can play with the shapes and move it longer time than the silicone glue you can also if you have the E6000 you can also try and play with glue with it <laughs> not play <laughs> Okay, so I'm just taking all kinds. Maybe, yeah, why not? Let's go diagonal. I'm playing. And what else? Let's take this one. So I'm going to do some pieces so you will see what I'm uh, doing and then I'm going to continue off camera until all the pieces are glued and then we'll continue. Now if you are planning, although I do, don't plan, I just glue stuff, <laughs> if you are planning on doing a lot of 
layers of uh, all these shapes then it's better to do a one layer cover it with black gesso or white gesso I will explain what the difference and then glue the second layer and then cover it again with gesso now if you are planning on a uh, coloring with dark colors it's better to have a black gesso underneath if you are planning on lighter uh, colors then it's better to have the white gesso now it here I don't have anything special it's all cardboard so I don't even uh, really need a gesso but I prefer to have it because it's a good primer and it will just uh, bring everything together because I have white and I have this and I have this so gesso will cover everything and will be a great primer to work whatever I am going to put on top so let's do another one like this I have excess glue which I'm just smearing me with my finger and that's a place that will be benefit from gesso so let's see let's put some yeah here Okay, I think I will move on to the shapes I have, all the circles and hexagons and whatever, like, things like this and all kinds of stuff that I have and I'm just going to play with what I have. So let's put some like this. I think that with this I don't need to do gesso and then another one wait and do another layer so I'm just keep keeping with gluing uh, this stuff and we'll see I had bigger hexagons and here I want a circle on the inside so again I'm just going to go in and I'm eyeballing it it really doesn't matter so now I've got something that looks like a cog Okay, so I've put the glue on the <laughs> wrong side. Not that the, there is really a wrong side, but it's better to put the glue on the side where you have the glossy uh, packaging. But because I'm going to use gesso, it really doesn't matter. So let's put some circles. And now what I'm going to do is find interesting uh, shapes that are, were left over like this one and I want to make like a connect with the shapes, something that will connect the sh two shapes. Like it's really a working machine with all kinds of parts in it. So let's see. And another uh, thing that you can do with the shades is take a punch like this and go around and punch circles. I need to. Okay. 
I don't even have to go all around my circle. I think this is enough. So I've got this and once again let's find some interesting shape to connect in between these two. Nope. I think I'll use it but I'll just trim it a little bit. Just play with it. Okay, so I'm going to continue just gluing stuff and when I'm finished, I'll be back. Okay, so here we are and now I want to add something more to this uh, cover. And if you have all kinds of a uh, flat back bling, if it's this stuff with adhesive in the back, or all kinds of stuff like this, then you can uh, work it in here. Now, even the ones with the adhesive, I'm always adding some, uh, I'm using the E6000 to put in the back because I don't trust the adhesive uh, here. And what I'm doing is spreading this all over and I don't care about the color it's all going to get covered with the gesso and I'm using the E6000 only because it has this very narrow opening and it's easier to work with so I'm just placing it in several places and I've got all kinds of sizes to uh, play with so just going to spread it and it Basically, it would look like a, a head of a nail once it's covered. So it would look like I, uh, there are nails here and here that connects these two pieces. That's the, the only thing that guides me in placing this flat head backs. So I'm just going to continue placing this stuff all over. If you've got interesting um, buttons, they can also work here. And I thought an, about another thing, but didn't want to go and start looking for <laughs> for it. Uh, metal zippers can also work in this kind of theme so I'm just going to continue gluing this stuff and I'll be back okay so I finished with all uh, gluing all this flat backs and now for just covering everything with black gesso which is kind of boring I'm just going to start so you will see what I'm doing and I'm uh, getting into all uh, the nooks and crannies I'm just covering everything and if I feel that it's not enough then I will just wait for everything to dry and then I will go uh, on top of it again but basically it's just to give me a nice base for my acrylic paint otherwise I really don't care and I'm just covering everything and getting inside all the crevices here and covering everything so quite boring nothing <laughs> nothing to see black on black <laughs> so when it's finished and dry i will come back and then we'll start 
making some magic with paint on top of all this detail. I'll be back. Okay, so this is dry. I want to start painting it with all kinds of um, dark blue. Of course, a uh, the color is up to you what you want. It doesn't have to be dark blue. Blue, and I'm just putting some uh, different colors. Don't really care. I want to finish some of my <laughs> old paint and just use it and that's it it doesn't even yeah old paint as i said and i also want to in very uh, small uh, places put some turquoise on so uh, i'm just going to be quick about it i'm taking a very wide brush and i am just tapping because I prefer to have this kind of texture than seeing the brush strokes. You can also do it with a sponge, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to cover it everything with the black with the blue, dark blue. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the turquoise and in several places dab a little bit like this so i have, i'm having a little bit of other color going on and i really it doesn't matter which color you prefer to uh, do uh, what i'm uh, i think works best is when you take several shades from the same color if you want browns take some shades of brown and work with it so you won't have a a solid color all over more of this dark blue spreading it all around trying to be quick about it And of course, if you don't like it, you can always wait for everything to get dry and cover with another color. Always an option. Now, I'm leaving part of the black showing. I like it. It gives another, again, another shade in all of this and variation in the color. So, I don't care. And I need more blue. Okay. Now, I don't know in how much of variation you can see in the video with the lightning I've got here. I'm not sure how much of it you can see, but there is a variation. And I think I will take just for the fun of it another shade of blue just to have fun with it and I'm spreading it and I'm working quickly because when it's still wet it blends better with the color I already got here so I'm doing this and I, th I think I will Add more of the turquoise later right now I'm more into the dark blue okay starting to take shape Some clouds are in and I lost most of the sunlight I had. <laughs> so now I having I'm having difficulty seeing what's going on. <laughs> okay, so now I'm spreading a little bit of the turquoise in several places. 
again to have some kind of variation some highlights I don't know what to call it okay this needs to be completely dry before I continue and for the next uh, phase we need some either pearlescent uh, acrylic paint or a metallic paint or a gilding wax so I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back okay so this is dry now I've picked a silver acrylic uh, paint it doesn't have to be that you can do pearlescent you can even uh, use a um, white acrylic paint or something like that to uh, give highlights to all this thing so I'm taking this a uh, sponge on a stick just because it's flat any kind of other a uh, sponge that is flat will work and I'm taking a little bit of the paint and on a piece of paper I'm dabbing it all so the paint will get into the sponge and also that I won't have excess paint and then gently I'm going to dab and just go all over and I'm doing it very gently and it will pick all this texture you need a very small amount on your sponge it almost needs to be dry that's why you are doing uh, this first on a piece of paper so you see how it picks all the details you created with just pieces from packaging here we go just be patient in this stage so you won't get the silver to cover everything you just need it to pick the texture and the all the the shapes you've put here you don't want a complete coverage so I'm just going to dab away <laughs> which is going to take some time and when I'm finished I'll get back okay so almost finished I just want to add something a little bit uh, more to this uh, cover and I think I'm going to make all this pin uh, heads or <laughs> nail heads that I've done with a different color so I'm taking again another sponge uh, only now I'm taking it with gold and I'm doing the same thing I've done with the silver but now I'm just dabbing on top of this small areas just making sure that I dab excess on on the paper like so so I'm just going to continue doing it now and as I said uh, there is another way to go about it and you can use gilding wax uh, the thing is that gilding wax is uh, quite expensive so I uh, if I'm using it I'm using it on small uh, areas like I could do this uh, pin heads with gilding wax but most of the time I will just uh, use the acrylic paint so I'm going to finish this I'm thinking maybe uh, to add something like a centerpiece I don't know not sure yet maybe I'll leave it as is it I quite like it so I'll be back okay so this is it I decided to leave it as is I'm going to bring it closer just so you can see 
how it looks and that's it now another thing that I just thought about uh, that another uh, way to go about doing all these pin heads is just using a nail polish because it's small areas it's really easy so that's another option to go so this is it I hope you liked it I hope you will try and uh, do something like that it was so much fun making it so thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below I'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now